And you know what? It's a fun game. Uh, it's great from a social perspective. Uh, but, you know, there are things that happen on a golf course. And I think in this episode, we're going to explain that uh, the golf warning uh, f- uh, four uh, can certainly take on a different meaning uh, when a golf ball escapes from a golf course. Hello and welcome to the next episode of Beneath the Law. My name is Gavin Ty. I'm with my partner and friend Stephen Teal. Hello, and Gavin. How are you doing? I am doing great. Thanks very much. Uh, but if you've seen my golf game, uh, you know that uh, I am no golfer. I, I I have not seen your golf game. Uh, I have my own golf game, and I'm not much of a golfer either. Yeah, I I I play golf. Um, maybe once a year, whether I like it or not, and generally it's not. So hats off to all of those uh, golfers out there. Um, but today's uh, episode will, I think, be some indication that there's probably a lot more golfers of my skill level than care to ad- that they care to admit, uh, because we're going to talk about the, uh, well, I'm not going to say um, accidental. It's all, In my case, it's not accidental when the golf ball goes out of bounds. It's pretty much guaranteed. So um, I take it there's a number of others uh, who hit the links uh, with similar skill levels. A, a lot of us have uh, 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 those kinds of skill levels. Uh, look, let's face it, uh, uh, being a uh, very good golfer takes a lot of practice. Uh, it's a game that is outside and that a lot of people have picked up because of Tiger Woods. Uh, uh, you know, and his popularity. And you know what? It's a fun game. Uh, it's great from a social perspective. Uh, but, you know, there are things that happen on a golf course. And I think in this episode, we're going to explain that uh, the golf warning uh, f- uh, four uh, can certainly take on a different meaning uh, when a golf ball escapes from a golf course. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of cases uh, over the years that have dealt with uh, errant sports shots. I mean, I recall a number of Lord Denning decisions. Lord Denning, uh, for the non-lawyers, uh, listen, was a very famous uh, British jurist who wrote some of the most important uh, decisions uh, in, uh, in, in jurisprudence uh, known to man. But he was very fond of his cricket cases and uh, spoke very fondly of, of the great game of cricket, which, of course, as with golf, deals with somebody hitting a very hard ball and not necessarily where they wanted it to go. Although in, in Lord Denning's cases, it was always because the Babe Ruth of cricket happened to drill the thing out of the cricket pitch into the neighboring houses. Uh, but he was fond of uh, giving the cricketers um, uh, the the run of it. That Not so uh, with golfers, who also uh, shoot very hard uh, projectiles uh, traveling very quickly uh, that can cause a lot of damage. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, remarkably, I actually saw it happen. Uh, uh, One of our colleagues actually hit a golf ball on a course that hit a tree and ricocheted uh, uh, into the neighbor's window, into a neighboring landowner's window. So, uh, you know, that was completely inadvertent. Uh, our colleague is actually a good golfer, but you're right. There are a lot of cases uh, where uh, neighboring landowners are impacted uh, by a golf course. And it's great to, to live a, uh, uh, against a golf course or, or to be an adjacent property owner to a golf course because you've, you've got basically a 120-acre, 140-acre park uh, right behind your property. But there are risks involved uh, with every uh, stroke uh, that somebody is going to take uh, uh, along a hole where your property uh, abuts or is adjacent to. Right. I, first of all, let me, let me just say that I don't want to make light of the quite serious damage that golf balls can inflict. Uh, in fact, we're not going to talk about this particularly, but I know of a number of personal injury cases where people have been very seriously injured by being hit by a golf ball, particularly if it hits them in the 
in the in the head. Um, so those are not to be th- those those are nothing to 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 make light of. Uh, on the other hand, I have a, I have an uncle who lives in Florida who uh, happens to back onto a golf course. He's an avid golfer, and he he told me that he hasn't bought a golf ball in twenty years because <laughs> he just goes in the backyard and picks up a dozen every morning. Oh, so, you you can pick up a hundreds uh, hundreds of them over the course of a season if uh, if if you're sitting there because look I mean you know uh, in the United States uh, certainly they build a lot of houses around golf courses I mean they're planned communities uh, uh, for that specific purpose they're retirement communities right live on a golf uh, uh, course exactly. and, and we're seeing that now a lot more certainly here in Ontario and and look there's no question that living in a home backing onto a golf course or any green space is a real luxury. And certainly our properties that are sought out and people look to live on golf courses, which raises the issue. Um, okay, wait a minute. Uh, you bought a house on a golf course and golf balls are in your backyard. Big surprise. Uh, is that is that a defense if uh, the homeowner takes umbrage with the amount of golf balls that are Entering their property, well, it it, it can be, uh, uh, it also cannot be. So you know, we, we talk about this because of a recent case that uh, actually came out of uh, Nova Scotia, uh, where a uh, landowner um, had a a number of golf balls land in their yard, and some of them hit the house, uh, uh, creating cracks to the siding. Uh, one of the golf balls uh, hit uh, uh, the homeowner's uh, truck, uh, creating a huge dent in the truck that uh, required repair. And the homeowner uh, brought a claim against the golf course. And the golf course basically tried to defend the claim on uh, uh, various arguments. Uh, uh, one being that, you know, you do kind of assume the risk of uh, living near a golf course. Uh, course now in this case in Nova Scotia a little bit different uh, the golf course didn't exist uh, when the property owner actually bought their property so it was built afterward uh, uh, although there may have been knowledge of a development or future development of a golf course taking place uh, the golf course had not been constructed at the time uh, or designed uh, the the neighbor's backyard was basically a forest uh, but now all of a sudden uh, uh, there you have a uh, golf course uh, but, you know, golf courses are designed, uh, keeping in mind, uh, uh, you know, bad golfers or amateur golfers uh, who hit errant uh, golf shots. And uh, uh, those designers uh, uh, really spend time to make sure or minimize the risk of golf balls leaving the, you know, let's call it the field of play um, uh, uh you know, to not go on to an adjacent property. Uh, you know, in this case, uh, the golf course was found liable, uh, you know, notwithstanding the arguments that they made. Uh, but you're right, in, in other cases, and, uh, you know, there are a lot of cases like this out there uh, where people actually build the home around an existing golf course. Well, that happened. and I, I think that that's important because it's not the distinction... Uh, if I can quote Lord Denning, it's not the distinction of he who comes to the nuisance. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, the in in the case that I'm thinking of, I think it was the Islington Golf Course here in Toronto, and a a, a homeowner bought a piece of property and built a new home on it uh, adjacent to the golf course. The golf course was there first, uh, and lo and behold, I think they were getting pummeled uh, with golf balls. Um, and they successfully sued the golf course with respect to the golf balls entering their property, even though they built the house after the golf course uh, was there. And as I recall, and I may be incorrect in this, but maybe you can correct me, but the golf course had to redesign the hole to accommodate the newly built house. Well, and 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 not only that, um, uh, in that case, and, and I know that uh, uh, case very well. I actually don't live very far away from uh, from the Islington uh, uh, golf course, so uh, I'm aware of its design and I'm aware of the community that surrounds it and uh, the street uh, that this uh, particular house uh, was built on. Um, 
and the uh, golf course at the time, and, and Islington Golf Course is a private golf course. It's not a public golf course. So one would expect that at a private golf course, you have um, uh, better skilled golfers. And that's because they have uh, golf pros to, you know, give lessons to people. But, you know, it, it you know, a lot of people can't control their uh, golf shots. I mean, let, let's face it, uh, golf can be a very frustrating game uh, uh, for those who play it. Uh, uh, and there's always one good shot that, uh, says, Hey, you know what? Uh, uh, I am the Babe Ruth of golf, uh, so to speak, and, and I can continue to play on. I haven't found that shot yet, Steve. <laughs> well, you have to golf more. Uh, uh you yeah, know, maybe one, it's one, out one, there. One, one game a year is not going to do it for you, Gavin. But, um, uh, so the golf course was actually, uh, uh, in consultation, uh, with the homeowner prior to the home being built. And, uh, you know, uh, they certainly kept in mind the design. But as you said, uh, uh, the uh, property was getting pummeled or there were a barrage of uh, golf balls uh, hit from the third hole of, uh, of the Islington uh, golf uh, course that landed onto their property, hit their house, uh, broke windows. Uh, you know, I think the homeowner uh, gave evidence in that case that they were even afraid to go outside. Uh, you know, to get their mail, right? They'd have to check to make sure that uh, some uh, errant shot uh, was not coming in, uh, you know, hitting them in the head while they were trying to k get their mail from, from yeah, the mailbox. Put your hockey equipment on in order to go out and collect your yeah, garbage Yeah, put, put some armor on, right? Uh, uh, so, uh, but in that case, yes, uh, the court awarded damages. Um, and, and really, look, uh, and maybe we should back this up a little bit. There are various claims that, uh, that a homeowner or adjacent homeowner can bring. Uh, uh, one is negligence, negligence in the design, uh, of the course, or, you know, I guess, uh, uh, arguably negligence against the golfer. If you can find out who, who, uh, hit the errant shot, um, nuisance, uh, basically, which is, is the interference, um, uh, of uh, the enjoyment of use of a property, uh, uh, trespass, uh, right, an unwanted uh, 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 somebody coming onto your property, right? No, nobody wants uh, errant golf balls landing on their property, except for my uncle who's looking for them. Okay, well, well, for sure. Well, I, I, I look for them too. Uh, you know, and maybe that makes my golf uh, game bad. Maybe I should buy new ones uh, rather than using used ones. But. Um, uh, and then there's that uh, uh, legal doctrine, and uh, we won't bore people with it, but it's called Rylands and Fletcher, and uh, basically it's a, a stricter kind of liability, and I'll, I'll enough said about that. But uh, So in, in the Islington golf course case, uh, you had hundreds of golf balls uh, landing in, on this person's property. And, you know, similar to the Nova Scotia case, uh, there were a lot of golf balls, and the uh, golf course received a lot of complaints uh, from various uh, neighboring properties, uh, you know, they tried to redesign the course uh, and tried to use that argument that it was redesigned to professional standards, but the uh, problem continued. Uh, and very similar in, in terms of the Islington Golf Course, uh, you know, uh, they designed their hole, uh, hopefully uh, uh, not to have people uh, hit golf balls onto the neighboring land, uh, uh, but the court awarded an injunction, and an injunction is not a uh, easy remedy to uh, necessarily get. It, it shouldn't be an easy remedy to get it. An injunction, uh, you know, is is an order of the court that prevents uh, something from occurring that stops an activity. Uh, at, at in this particular instance, in regards to the golf course, um, an activity that had been carried on at that golf course by that time for you know, decades, um, and getting an injunction to stop that activity is pretty serious business, and it should be serious business. Um, so, but our injunctions uh, aren't easy to get. Are there other cases where people have tried to get injunctions against golf courses and failed? Yes, and and that really, um, you know, when we uh, uh, get into beneath the law here, uh, is really about a, um, you know, a comparison between the number of uh, golf balls uh, uh, that are hit onto the adjacent landowner's property, uh, uh, some assumption of risk uh, as well, 
uh, you know, wh whether the homeowner says, yeah, you know, I bought the uh, property knowing that uh, golf balls would come here and uh, I just wanted to move into the neighborhood. Uh, but where you have a uh, situation where you only have a golf ball or an errant shot uh, uh, onto your property on a limited number of, of occasions, you're going to face as a adjacent property owner uh, a, a much more higher burden of proof uh, to get that injunction. Yeah, let's uh, talk and, about that for a sec. To get an injunction, the, we'll talk in a really general way uh, of, a, of a court and the golf courses is one element of it. There are many, many injunctions granted and sought. But the injunction, basically, you have to show three things. You have to show the court, number one, there's a serious issue to be tried. In other words, that there's there's meat on the bones in this case, uh, that there is there is a real claim here uh, and that this is something that the court's going to deal with. That's not a hard threshold to meet, and almost every case will meet that. The second aspect of it, uh, or the second and third, are more difficult. The, the second aspect of it is that there's irreparable harm if the injunction is not granted. And irreparable harm, it means what it says. It means harm that can't be fixed. Um, cases, for example, that can be fixed with a check aren't irreparable. If damages will do, you're not going to get an injunction. Um, so that irreparable harm is a very difficult threshold to demonstrate on an injunction, and it is one the courts uh, will review. And then the third aspect of it is, I think, tying into what you mentioned a moment ago, which is the balance of convenience. Uh, there must be, uh, it must, the injunction being granted must uh, weigh in favor of the party seeking it than the party not seeking it. In other words, the harm that's being done must be more serious uh, than the harm that will be done by granting the injunction uh, if if it is granted. So in that in this particular case, I think there was a case out of Wasega Beach that we were talking about. Um, I don't think that the shutting the hole down in the golf course w was seen as being more serious than the harm to the property owner with respect to the odd golf ball that was flying their way. C correct. And and uh, uh, it's a weighing exercise, right? So the court is attempting to draw a uh, balance. So uh, uh, you allude to the uh, uh, Wasega Beach case, um, where, again, a number of golf balls uh, uh, were hit off the course, off a particular hole, uh, you know, flying all over the place and um, uh, uh, complaints being made to uh, to the golf course. And the golf course redesigned the hole and planted trees. Um, you know, in Islington's case, uh, uh, they put up some netting, but the netting didn't really... Uh, the netting in itself was, was considered to be a nuisance because of uh, the manner and, and the placement of the netting. Uh, and the court was actually not happy with the way that uh, the Islington uh, Golf Club uh, uh, reacted to the uh, dispute and uh, uh, basically had to modify an injunction uh, uh, first given against uh, Islington uh, Golf Course to uh, modify their course. And, the you know, in the, in the Wasaga Beach case, the court makes a very interesting statement, and it's been a statement that's made in other golf uh, uh, cases, Golf is a game of 18 holes. Golf is not a game of 17 holes. And, uh, you know, an adjacent uh, uh, golf course is really a business. And if you cut one hole out of the game, well, guess what? I, as a golfer, I'm going to go to some other golf course where I can get the value for my money and play that additional hole or play the full 18 holes rather than uh, paying the same amount of money. And guess what? Oh, I can't play because we're worried about a uh, errant shot escaping the uh, onto a neighboring property, and I can't get full value out of my, you know, I don't know, $100 uh, plus cart uh, uh, to play the game. And and so that's, that's part of the weighing exercise that a court takes into account. Uh, you know, you talk about uh, the test, uh, the first part of the test. Uh, the serious issue to be tried, and that's the standard go-to test uh, on an injunction, and that uh, you know comes about out of uh, UK case law and then adopted into Canada um, uh, in a, a very famous decision called RJR McDonald. But um, you know, uh, even in injunctions, a um, a party seeking an injunction where they're trying to force 
uh, somebody to do something, uh, to mandate uh, what they should do, that's actually a higher test. You actually need to, it's not a serious issue to be tried. It's whether you will actually win at the end of the day, right? Whether you're going to succeed, it's, it's you know, that test is the prima facie uh, case test. And so that makes it very difficult uh, uh, when you're seeking an injunction, but uh, it does. It comes down to the balancing uh, when you talk about the number of golf balls that are uh, 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 flying into somebody else's uh, home. You know, your uncle is uh, getting 100 balls. I hope they're not all on his property. Maybe they're down in a ravine, but... Well, I, I like to say that they're, they're golf balls that, that have lost their sense of direction, so they're probably not particularly good for someone like me. I need, I need the ones that uh, are flying <laughs> in the right direction because mine all tend to go in the wrong direction. Um, but, but the notion um, of the harm is pretty important, I think, when we talk about the court exercising what is an incredible power of injunctive relief. Um, is if the harm that the order creates is more than the harm that the order prevents, it shouldn't be issued. Um, and that is, I think, fundamentally what the these golf course cases kind of il illustrate as a concept uh, that applies across the board uh, to injunctive relief and the court's uh, willingness to exercise that power. Uh, as I say, if, if the harm in the Wasega case to the business of the golf course was seen by the court to be more uh, substantial than the harm that the order would have prevented by shutting it down. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, uh, uh, in in the Islington uh, case, look, if you got a private member club, people are paying a fee uh, uh, for that. But when you have a public horse who is much more reliant um, on uh, uh, people uh, uh, buying golf games, right, uh, uh, on a regular basis. Um, shutting down a hole is going to uh, have a very, very significant impact uh, on that kind of a business. And because they occupy so much land, uh, golf courses, you know, are required to pay property taxes like anybody else. And those property taxes aren't necessarily cheap. And it's a business. They have employees. Uh, you know, you shut down a golf course, you're putting people out of work. Uh, or shutting down a hole that, uh, you know, causes uh, the business to lose money. Uh, so those are very important considerations that have to be uh, uh, kept in mind uh, by a court uh, uh, in these kinds of cases. And, you know, like we talk about it, our justice system is pretty good. Uh, you know, we may hem and haw at times, you know, why did the judge make this decision? You know, we don't like that decision. We think the decision is wrong. Uh, but overall, at the end of the day, uh, you know, much uh, there are more decisions that get it right uh, than decisions that get it wrong. You know, absolutely. So and again, we come back to the point, and we see in all of our episodes that the administration of justice, you are right, it, they do get it right uh, far more than they get it wrong. And the system, uh, as a result of that, has a confidence of the uh, of citizens, and that ultimately is a big part of our social contract, particularly in a Western democratic state like Canada, uh, that allows us to have the type of society that we live in. And it's it's really um, a credit to the justice system that it continues to inspire that kind of public confidence. Yeah, and look, you know, the the golf course thing is fun. Right, it's uh, a lot of people participate in in golf. They like to get outside and and they like to socialize and you know drink beer and and other things uh, uh, while on. Maybe the Maybe that's course why and... they hit so many off the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that doesn't help. You see, you can improve your game or, already. Uh, I think it's but... the Johnny Fever approach to golf. Maybe it will help. <laughs> WKRP in Cincinnati for uh, for those uh, young listeners who Look don't it up know on YouTube. Who Johnny greatest Fever episode is, ever. But... Uh, but you know, it's it's look, uh, uh, it's about a practical approach, right? It's about having common sense. So, in terms of uh, of uh, being a homeowner uh, adjacent to a uh, golf course, look, the the common sense is you're going to take the risk, and you know maybe you should do some research before you buy that property uh, uh, that's adjacent to the golf course to know exactly what the risk of uh, flying golf balls will be into your yard. 
you know, if 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 you don't like the fact that your uh, uh, Saturday afternoon barbecue is going to be interrupted by a uh, flying golf ball, uh, you know, while you're flipping a burger, uh, because it happens so often, don't buy a house uh, adjacent to to a golf course. On the opposite side, uh, you know, golf courses uh, really need to pay attention uh, in terms of course design. Uh, the game has changed uh, 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 quite a bit over the years. You know, it's uh, there's no longer uh, wooden uh, 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 golf uh, uh, clubs. Uh, you know, they've got some of these great shafts that really, uh, you know, whip your club as you're swinging and increase your speed to, so you can hit the ball 90 miles an hour or 100 miles an hour. You know, convert that to kilometers. I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I grew up in the mile per hour stage, but... Uh, era, but, um, uh, you know, and golf balls are, uh, uh, you know, designed now with a lot more technology. Uh, so older designed golf courses uh, really need to uh, keep up with technological changes because what once may never have uh, happened with a new golf ball or new golf clubs may happen more and more regularly. Right. You're making terrible golfers like me even more lethal uh, because we can exponentially increase the uh, distance that we can shoot the ball in the wrong direction. Um, it, it was a very, very interesting and uh, uh, fun discussion today about golf um, on our third episode of uh, our podcast. I'd like to thank you very much for listening. I really appreciate uh, any comments that you can give us, any suggestions either how we can make this more fun and entertaining and informative and or for topics. Uh, if you're interested in a particular legal issue and you'd like to have us um, delve into it and, and uh, discuss it, um, please give us suggestions. We're always open to it. Uh, we very much appreciate any feedback that you can give. Um, again, my friend Stephen Thiel, uh, thank you for uh, your, your insights. Uh, and always a pleasure and uh, to talk to you about uh, any issue, but particularly these legal issues. And as we are fond of saying, if nobody is above the law, then everyone is beneath it. Thanks again for joining us. 